Today we're going to do a automated double drop down price list. So what's going to happen is that it's going to be automated so that you can change your invoice number and your items, the quantity, the price, all the way down to the final price will all update. So that's the automated part. Let me show you again. Let me change it to invoice two and invoice three see these items have changed and so is the prices so that's the automated part the double drop downs um, which feed here are in our items and what you can have is you can have a drop down with a border category I've only got three in here as an example and then you've got a second drop down which is dependent on the first drop down so if my if I've got bees instead of honey my options in my second drop down have changed and that's why it's sometimes called a dependent drop down but i like to call it a double drop down uh double drop down is here so let's begin i'm going to start from the beginning i'm going to do a new from template gallery we're going to steal the google sheets invoice template because it just has a lot of useful things in there and it already starts to look good all of this area can be filled in if you watch the automate the invoice video um so first thing i'm going to do here though is these are merged which is a bit annoying so we're going to unmerge these by clicking the unmerge button and that will help us when we fill them in then i'm going to create a price list here can call these uh, like a category and a subcategory or I'm going to call mine an item and a description and then I'm going to copy and paste what I made earlier ta-da here's some I made earlier and this is our price list you can have as many items as many kind of descriptions within those items as you like uh, then next is going to be our items that are going to go in the invoice. I experimented quite a bit with this, uh, trying to do them lengthways instead of down, and this seems to be the neatest and most efficient way of doing it. So what we have here is we're going to put in our invoice number, the, uh, and then this is where we're going to have our double drop downs, our item and our description. So if we imagine we have our first invoice number is called 001, we'll have maybe three items, three or four items, 001, and then we'll have 002, and we'll have a few items in 003. So our first item is going to be our first drop down, and that's going to be based off our price list here. What's handy with the drop downs is it actually a ggups for us gduplicates it so all we have to do is insert a drop down and we're going to have a drop down from a range and then click on this button here to select our data range put in an equals in here and our drop down is going to be for some reason it wants you to click somewhere before you click on the whole of column A. But we want to select the whole of column A because it will dedupe for us and it means that we can add as many more items as possible without having to update any of the formulae. So we'll select, select that whole column and it will dedupe and get rid of the blanks. So if we go back here, there you go, you've just got item B's honey hive. These little grey boxy things are called chips. I prefer instead of a chip a little traditional arrow and to show a warning rather than reject the input. Um, we can also apply that to the whole range so not just to B2 but we can let's bring it down to B25 so if we apply that to from B down to B25 there we go, we've got our drop downs that we can use. Right, the next is our 
dependent drop down so in here where this is hive we want our next one to be small medium and large or if it's honey we'd want it to be the options of sizes and if it's bees we want it to be a queen a worker or a drone bee so how do we get these to update automatically the way the best way i think <laughs> um to do it is if along here we put the secondary drops so so our secondary drop will depend on our item here whether it's hive bees or honey and we're going to say we're going to use filter filters a nice function quite a new function um, so we're going to filter our descriptions it's so that whole of column b we want anything in that column where the item is equal to the item here. Press enter on that. You can see that if this is hive, we have small, medium, large. If we have bees, it's our different worker bees. If it's honey, it's our different sizes. So that filters works really nicely. The only thing is it's going downwards. We want it to go across so that we can fit more in as we go down. So instead of having it going down, we want it to go across. So we want to transpose. So we just need to stick the word transpose, put the rest of it in brackets in here. And now do we have our secondary drops and we can copy these down. Let's copy them down to 25 that's where our formula drops to and you can see where we've got bees we'll fill in bees honey grams and hive our sizes and if we change these like so our secondary drops will change uh, now we want a drop down in here so we can select from one of these and our drop down we're going to do the same way as we did it before we're going to add a rule we're going to add a drop down from a range we're going to select the range and um, so if we're going to select it from f2 all the way to z2 click ok and we're going to do what we did before which is show a warning make an arrow click done lovely um if you just copy and paste this down what this will do is it will use the same drop downs so let me show you so our bees is queen bee work bee drone this next one we want it to be based off honey but because we've copied and pasted the same drop down it is using exactly the same inputs this isn't what we want to do, but it's an easy fix. So if we go to our validation rules, which is here, we want it to um, apply to the range up to C25. So it's what we're doing at the moment. You can make it longer. Um, it's fixed the items on F2 to Z2. We don't want it to do that. We want it to move down. So we want it to look at the next column the next sorry the next row and then the next row as we move down so what we can do is we can keep the columns fixed so you can keep the f and the z fixed but we want the rows to move so if we get those rid of those dollar signs that will allow the the rows to move when you're going down so now bees these are bees this is honey this now changes to the honey options and this is now the hive options etc i've added a few more uh, now we can try and get the front page to automate filling these in uh, one more thing actually while we're here we need to add in a quantity so invoice one how many bees do they want to buy how many honey pots um, how many hives so let's just stick in some numbers in here just to make sure that everything's working when we go to here 
And what we're going to use again is that lovely filter function. We're going to use move the description over there and we're going to have item here. And what we're going to do is we're going to filter again. So we're going to filter our items. But what we want is we only want our items if it's the right invoice number. So if this column here has our invoice number here. And then we need to put in an invoice number. There you go. And then if we change our invoice number, there we go, things get filled up for us. So that's the automated part. That's automated filling in the item. Um, in order to do description, we're going to drag across. So instead of looking at column B, we're going to be looking at C for the description. But the, uh, the invoice number is going to always be in column A and we're always going to look at the invoice number in F12. So if we fix these, so function F4, function F4, and that's fixed. And then we copy and paste that over to the right and that will fill in that information. We can copy and paste it again and we'll get the quantities. We cut and paste that across. Oh, I didn't like us cutting, effect, cutting and pasting. Let's get the formula. Let's do that. So this is now looking at column D because the quantity was in column D and then the price. The price we need to do a little bit differently because that price is in our price list here. So our price list, in order to do that, we're going to do a V lookup. So we're going to vertically look up our description within a price list. I'm going to highlight all of that so that we can add more later and we don't have to update the formula. So we're going to update, not all of that, sorry, because we're looking at the description. We're going to look up the description. So queen bee, work B, not the item. So we look up what we're looking up in there. And then we want the second column across. So this is one, this is two. So the second column across. So that said perfect match, we have to write false. There you go. Uh, if you copy this down, there you go, the unit price for a worker bee, drone bee, and the honey. Um, if we change our invoice, these should up, add up. But here we're getting an NA because it's trying to look up nothing and it can't find nothing in the VLOOKUP. So we've got an easy way of cleaning this up. It's called, this is an error. So we're going to say if there's an error, so if error based on that formula, then give me nothing. So give me double quotes with nothing in it. It says give me nothing. If I copy that, paste it down. There you go. And it should update. That is your automated. Automated because you can change the invoice. Uh, double drop down price list or dependent drop down price list. If you need to add in more lines here, you can do that. If you need to add in more uh, prices, you can do that and it should feed for automatically. Hopefully you've followed everything, but you can always download the free template from bloombuildanalysis.com slash sting. So next time we're going to print out loads of invoices. We're going to use the app script in order to do that, which because nobody really wants to learn the code for app script, we're going to get chat GPT to write the app script for us, which is quite a cool new tool, really. If you haven't played with it yet, then it'd be nice to show you what it can do for Google Sheets. OK, thank you. Bye.